Welcome, my curious souls, and thank you for joining us today. You are listening to What's That Hate, a podcast that takes the myths and legends of the paranormal, dissects it down, and provides you the real evidence and research associated with ideas of the paranormal to allow you not only to be able to identify these entities, but to better care for your own cosmic energy. I am Mountain Mama. And this podcast is ran by Mountain Mama Investigations, a Appalachian high strangeness and paranormal research team dedicated to the preservation of historical locations with a focus in Appalachia and aiding those in paranormal crisis. We are a nonprofit organization, meaning any support you provide through listening to this podcast or following us on social media allows us to fundraise for materials and services needed in private paranormal crisis cases. In addition, it allows us to go out to these historical locations as we work to bring interest to them, as we want them to thrive for future generations to enjoy. Our other main goal is to do our part to help break the barriers and stigma around the paranormal and experiencing it. A bit about myself. I am a spiritual practitioner and medium working in the areas of Reiki, chakras, tarot, and parapsychology. My certifications are in each of those areas, and I use these in individual healing sessions and in paranormal investigations. I work in what is called the old ways, and am constantly looking to find a better way to life and working to become the best version of me. I also dabble in Akashic Records and all things that may be considered woo-woo. Always feel free to reach out if you have a question because all are welcome here. With this being said, I am not a medical practitioner. If you are undergoing any type of physical or emotional stress that needs medical attention, then we support you in doing so. We would never tell you not to. Some of you may be wondering what a hain is. (laughs) Hain is a term that has been used in various parts of the world, but for myself, it was used largely in my hometown and area of Eastern Kentucky. Hain is a common word used in Appalachia to describe a spirit or ghost or anything related to the paranormal or supernatural, really. This is why it was normal in Appalachia to paint their porches haint blue, as many folks worked on ways to rid their homes of these entities. Today's episode is about a haint or type of energy that many may not be familiar with, but don't worry, you will be after this episode. Now it is time for you to sit back and relax while we expand your mind on a haint called the Servitor. Imagine this, you are driving along your usual route from work. It has been a long day, but you do enjoy your evening commute as it always has beautiful scenery and inspiring architecture from the past. You make your turn onto that old country road and there is a glow of orange cast on everything around as the evening sun is winding down to end the day. You look to your right as you see that familiar pasture, you know, the one with the tall grass and wildflowers, flowing effortlessly in the light wind. In the distance, you can make out the outline of your favorite landmark on this drive, An old abandoned mansion stands with its proud stone structure reminding you of how there is not another home like this in all of town. You've always wondered what stories it holds, or the events of the past that took place within its grand walls. The sun is still out, so you decide today is the day. You are going to find out. You envision what beautiful hand-carved pieces it may contain inside. You park your car and make your way to the front entrance, push open the old yet heavy wooden front door as it makes a long squeak while it falls back. The interior sports that same beautiful stone as the outside, and just as you imagined you see that grand staircase in the middle of the building with those ornament features that only a hand-carved job can give. They look sturdy enough, so you walk up them. At the top, You see a door in front that is slightly ajar, and you push it open to reveal a grand library from many years past. Books that have aged with time, but this library has a distinct feeling that it is still cared for. 
You walk further into this massive room with floor-to-ceiling bookshelves and run your hands along the books. And that is when you feel breath near your ear and hear the words, Might I suggest the title? You whip your head around and become startled as you realize you are still alone. You ask yourself, What is that hate? What is a servitor? It doesn't exactly fall into those typical entity names that we're used to, like ghost, demon, or now poltergeist. So what do we do if we experience one? Well, that's what we will answer today. But let's back up and start with what a servitor actually is. So a servitor falls into the category of thought form. A thought form is an entity created not by the dead, but by the living. It is something referred to as a thought entity. Now, these are created through intense concentration, strong emotion, much like that poltergeist we talked about, and can be made purposely or even by accident. Are they good or bad? Well, that depends on the situation or how they make you feel. It is all about intention. But I have found by sometimes removing the label of good or bad when describing an entity, we can then examine it more closely with an open mind. So we will discuss this in further detail in later podcast episodes. We know that a servitor has to be created by a living person, so now our question is, how do we do it, and why would someone want to? So sometimes referred to as a astral servitor, this entity is created by a practitioner. What I mean by practitioner is someone who is versed in astral or magical workings who would want to create this type of thought form, as the idea is that a servitor is created through the energy of that practitioner, like they're taking a piece of their self. So the key in creating this entity is intense focus such as trance or the method of conjuration. This does mean that the energy of the practitioner is placed within this entity to give it life. And it is made in order to serve a specific person or purpose in mind. Think of it as an imaginary friend with a real solid purpose. Before we move forward, there are also some notes to keep in mind on how to take care of your servitor. There are references that even refer to them as magical pets. One article discussed the importance of housing your servitor. Since they are located in the astral plane, you would use a physical object in our reality or our plane of existence to kind of bind them to it. Some people may use rings, poppets, and various items, you name it. But another important factor mentioned is that one must create a contract or sometimes called a command to create this entity. This means giving the entity a name and what its purpose will be or what it will do for you. So going back to that pet reference, it is also important to feed your servitor. At this point, you may be wondering if I'm talking about a Tamagotchi or entity, but just stick with me and we'll get through it together. So feeding a servitor is simply done by using it. And as it gains success in accomplishing what has been set forth to do, this also nourishes it. I believe it's really important here to also note not to attempt this without doing your research. I am providing you the general steps and ideas so we can get to a point of discussion on how the servitor can affect the paranormal field. Now, if you want to know more on creating one or working with one, then please, please, please do your research with some reputable authors and experts in the field of thought forms. You see, there is also the opportunity to create a servitor in a way that it can keep creating itself, much like a form of cell division. Moving on. What is most important is to think of this entity as having a single track mind. They can be created for a particular situation, event, or even have a general purpose, such as healing, um, depression. People can use them for success, prosperity, But it has been created by a human in order to do this one specific thing, and that is all it cares about. So let's walk through an example to help us connect all these pieces. I create a servitor to help me find a book that belonged to my ancestors. Maybe it was a, we'll say, magical cookbook. 
It was lost at some point throughout our family tree, but I really want that magical cookbook. So I make me a servitor and I name it Jimmy. I set forth a contract or command that Jimmy will go out wherever he needs, no matter the country, time, or place, and they will find this magical cookbook of my ancestors. They will come back and tell me where it's at, and then I'll go get it. When learning about this thought form, I asked myself a question. Is it possible for a human beyond the creator of this servitor entity to happen upon the servitor by mistake, maybe during a paranormal investigation? For instance, I go to investigate a location. There is no historical reason beckoning on what could be causing the activity in the home, but yet a presence is being experienced. What happens if it is a servitor? And what would that be like for an investigator who has no clue what one is? And that is the exact question that I took to Kadrich Olson. Kadrich Olson is a paranormal expert who is also an author, speaker, and teacher. When I came across his interview with Gaia TV, I knew he was just the person I needed to ask so I could relay it back to you, friends. And he answered. He explained that it is possible to encounter another person's servitor. And that when it does happen, it can be annoying. (laughs) Referencing back to my single track mind comment. They don't have a lot to say because they are focused on their one task. So unless you are helping them with that, they don't have much care for you. Its purpose is to complete that one task and to get others to help them accomplish it. They can grow and become a bit more complex. But he says that this isn't usually something that happens. Not that it's out of the realm of possibility, though. If you need help or assistance, if you believe that you're actually encountering a servitor, then he recommends bringing someone in who is versed in magical or practitioner ways um, who would be able to close that out for you. But we'll discuss a little bit more on that later. Now that we have this knowledge, let's go back to using my magical cookbook of my ancestors example. So you are in your house going about your business when you hear a disembodied voice asking you about a cookbook. You're a bit startled, as anyone would be, but then become curious enough to actually go over to your cookbooks and take a look. It has you hooked. You start thinking about the cookbook that was mentioned and you remember what a great deal you got on it in that pop-up yard sale while on vacation. And this is why we cleanse our items. But where did you put it? You feel led to keep looking, but also you know something is off within the home, so you decide to call in a paranormal investigator. Now, the investigator gets there and sets up their equipment. They decide to start with a baseline with some EVP, electronic voice phenomena session, which is a way to allow entities to speak through electronic frequency or using it as a conduit, or maybe they're able to speak at a level which we can't hear until we play it back. But the investigator may get some EVP and it's all about a cookbook I would be confused too the investigator concludes the investigation and thinks man this entity really likes antique cookbooks because the few times it interacted it was all about this one purpose and this one cookbook and working to get help with it you continue to look for that book and when you find it the presence is just gone you're not hearing disembodied voices about cookbooks anymore and maybe a few weeks later a stranger knocks on your door asking if they can buy this book they were told you had and now we have come full circle now for the paranormally important part to me for those who encounter or decide to make a servitor is the importance of dismantling it once its work is done This means to actually free it and unbind it to return to the cosmos from whence it came. If this is not done, this is where the problem sets forth. This is when a servitor can become something more entity-wise and can develop to be something that no longer caters to its creator's control. It's basically taken off its leash. That leads to this man-made spirit being able to run amok in homes, lands, buildings, you name it, And depending on the severity, it leads to those unexpected victims in those areas being affected by a paranormal crisis with an entity that they had no part of making. So why talk about thought forms? Because by naming every entity or haint we encounter a ghost or demon, 
we really limit ourselves. When we limit ourselves in the paranormal world, we don't always know what specific entity we are dealing with. And by not knowing this, we don't know the specific way to care for it for ourselves or to help others. Which once again leads us to the word ghost being a very broad term when there are so much more than ghosts out there. But for now, my friend, we must digest what we have learned here and leave those other haints to another day. If you enjoy this kind of research, stories, or the paranormal, then feel free to follow us on social media. That way you can know what kind of shenanigans we're up to. You can find us on YouTube by searching Mountain Mama Investigations. We are also on TikTok as Mountain Mama IMV, and you can also search us on Twitter and Instagram. If you would like to tell some stories or join in on more of our Appalachia-focused information, then join our Facebook group, Haints and Hollers. Want to ask a question or need help? Then send us over an email at haintsandhollers at gmail.com. We appreciate your support on these platforms as we work to raise funds for our nonprofit to give us access to items and services needed during paranormal crisis and to just allow us to explore historical locations and advocate for the preservation and bring that back to you and to take you on that journey. Now, if you are interested in standing behind this cause, then we will provide a link with no pressure for you to donate. Did you enjoy our intro music? If so, I am proud to say that it is from an Eastern Kentucky native. If you want to hear some music that will hit you right in the soul, then check out Annalise and Ryan on their webpage. The Huffington Post states that their music is resounding from the hollers with a haunting beauty. Well said. I am proud not only to have this music grace this podcast, but to also call Annalise family. She and her husband have worked to keep the beauty of Appalachia upon our ears. Well, friends, until next time, remember, if you see a haint, give us a holler. <laughs>